Good afternoon. We are going to start a demo lecture on uh, stiffness matrix. To start with stiffness matrix, it is necessary to understand that how this stiffness matrix is actually coming into the coming into picture. If we see structural analysis, it is classified under two headings. Actually, it's determinant analysis or it's indeterminate analysis. If you talk about determinant analysis, it's very easy to analyze any structure which is determinant. For example, simply support a cantilever. So there are many ways, actually with equilibrium equations, you can easily solve any determinant structure. If not equilibrium, then a compatibility condition can be helpful and you can very well solve the structure. But when it comes to indeterminant, further there are two classifications to analyze any indeterminant. Uh, first is the displacement method and other other force method. We know many of the displacement method like uh, talking about stiffness itself is a stiff, uh, displacement method and uh, the slope deflection method whereas in force method we have flexibility method and PMT. So my point is stiffness method. So basically this is the branch of structural analysis that comes under the displacement method of indeterminate structural analysis. With this as a starting we can now see what is actually a stiffness matrix. Uh, to start with stiffness matrix, it's very necessary to start with the definition itself. I'm not going into depth, but stiffness is the, nothing but the force required to cause a unit displacement. So the key term here is unit displacement. My friends, you know what is the difference between a stiffness and flexibility of a structure. What is the difference? The flexibility is actually the displacement caused by a unit force. Am I right? So if this is the meaning of stiffness and flexibility, my point is the stiffness should be inversely proportional to flexibility, right? This we are going to prove it later and I am also going to create a confusion later in your minds. Uh, to start with a very basic problem, we will say, uh, before we start with the flexibility or a stiffness matrix rather, it's very important to know uh, some of the formulas. You people must be knowing some of the formulas like m is equal to 3 i by l and etc. But here in uh, our lecture we are not blindly going to use this formula as it's necessary to understand the derivation of it. I hope uh, you people know it but I will give a quick brush up of these formulas. The very first method, uh, very first is, uh, see if it is a hinge, I will be asking question directly. If it is a hinge, if I want a unit rotation at this end, let it be theta, what should be the moment required? This is the very first thing. So we know here m is equal to 3 ei by l. Actually it's 3 ei theta by l where theta is 1. So from here to here only this much space is enough to solve this problem. The best thing is how will be the uh, to solve this problem is by conjugate B method. So what is the BMD for this? I think it's very well known to all of you. This is the BMD. If I want to make the conjugate beam, a hinge becomes a hinge, a hinge becomes a hinge, the BMD becomes the loading. So if I, if this is A, let it be A dash, let it be B dash, if I can find R A dash, that would be nothing but the theta A at the simply separate beam. What is R A dash? Simple to find, this is the loading diagram. If I want R A dash, let me take the moment about B dash. So what it will be? R A dash into L. So if this goes like this, this goes like this, minus, this is actually a triangle, 1 by 2 into m by ei into l into, what will be the distance? We want from here till here, right? So it's 2 by 3 of l. That is equal to what? 0. So from here, I'll get r a dash is equal to, 2 cancel, this l cancels here, ml upon 3 ei, right? But that is nothing but the theta a. If you change m, keep here and shift everything here, you got the first formula that is m is equal to 3a by l. Also, if I want the reaction r a dash itself, if r a, what is r a actually? What is r a here? It's nothing but m by l. So r a is m by l. So if you put here, it will be 3 e i by l square. This is the first formula that I wanted to derive. Uh, the second formula, I think. You all know it's when the far end is when the far end is fixed instead of hinge. What will be the moment required to cause a unit rotation here? Theta a. The formula is m is equal to what is the formula here? 4 e i by l. 
So if 4EI, well, what is, I am not going to go in detail here, I am going to just give the concept here. This is the moment, this will be its BMD, if I am right. Right? This will be hinged, a fix becomes free. This is actually the conjugate beam of the main beam. So if you see here, this is M by EI, what will be this value? M plus RA into L upon EI. Am I right? Now what you have to do is, you need what? RA dash. But uh, can you take moment above this point? No. Because amount, moment above this point is not equal to 0. And moreover, to find RA dash, you need RA. So let me take the moment above this location. On solving, when you will get RA, you can then substitute in RA dash and you will get the moment is equal to 4 EI by L. This is the second formula. Should I uh, go with the derivation? No need. So let's uh, see the other three, uh, other two formulas. And let's start with the stiffness matrix. When the far end is hinged, what is the force required to cause a unit displacement here? So here we are interested with unit displacement, not unit rotation. In that case, M comes out to be. So if you see here, if you see here, the BMD for this will be, here if it is delta, here there will be a moment. So you can choose the direction, let's say the direction is M here. This will be the, uh, this actually because of this displacement, this beam will try to rotate. To restrain its rotation, there will be a moment generated because it is fixed here. So due to this, we have a M here. The BMD for this will be a moment over here and zero moment over here. If this is the case, this is RA again. And this is RB. Here the loading is in upward direction. Now when you solve, solve it, you will get M is equal to 3EI by L square. And you will get RA as 6EI by L square. If you want the derivation, I can derive it with the same procedure. The fourth case is when the, this end is given a displacement and the far end is also fixed. In this case, the moment comes out to be 6 EI by L square and the reaction comes out to be 12 EI by L cube. The BMD for this if you want to know it will be somewhat like this because both ends will be having moment. One side up and one side below. Again this will be RA dash and here there will be no force, uh, no support. If you want the depth and de uh, derivation of these formulas, you can contact me in the Learn Several website and I can tell you in detail the derivation. Let's start with the basics of stiffness by taking a simple problem. You need to keep these formulas in mind before starting the stiffness method. If you take a simple problem to start with, a fixed beam, with two coordinates here, 1 and 2. Uh, to understand the difference between flexibility and stiffness, we will be solving it by both the methods. So that we can see whether K is inversely proportional to F or not. This is the first condition we know. So here let's do it by flexibility. Uh, if you have calculators ready, you can keep calculators ready for any help in calculation. So, uh, so first is apply a unit force at 1. If you are doing flexibility, it will be apply unit force at 1. So what will be the condition? If you apply 1 kN here, 1 kN here, the BMD will be somewhat like this. What will be F11? Here what I am using is, first one denotes where the load is. The second one denotes where V are taking its action. So this is the position and this is the action where we are considering. So F11 will be equal to, if this is 1, let the span be uh, 5 meters. So if this is 5 meter, this will be 5. It's 1 by 2 into 5 into, this span is 5 again. So 5 into 2 by 3 of 5. This value comes out to be 5 is a 25. 25 5 is a 625. 125. 125 by 3. F12 will be equal to just the area, not the 
uh, if one two means one is the location of the load applied. So one is this, and two will be its uh, po position. Here at two is actually a moment. Whenever we take a moment, we should take the area, not the distance multiplication. So if you take the area only, it's one by two into five into five. That is twenty five by two, right? If this is f two one two. If uh, now we take into consideration at two, applying at two. If we apply at two, a moment that is of one. What will be the BMD? It's just a rectangle with one as its ordinate and five is the value. What will be f two two? It will be five into one, right? What will be f two one? It will be five into one into five by two. That's twenty five by two. So I'm just erasing everything and keeping the matrix alone. So we have, I'll write it here. We have the value as uh, 125 by 3. Uh, F12 is 25 by 2. Here is 25 by 2, and F22 is 5. This is our flexibility matrix. Now let's see the stiffness matrix. If we talk about the stiffness matrix, in the starting I told the definition as apply. What we did there was apply a unit force. Here we will apply a one unit displacement. Huh? Uh, it will it will solve it easily. It's not an issue. So if you see here, apply a unit displacement. If you apply unit displacement, see the first thing is stiffness matrix is you constrain the structure. So wherever the coordinates are, any stiffness matrix order will be equal to the Kinematic indeterminacy of the structure. Here, the kinematic indeterminacy is two. Why? Because here it can rotate, as well as it can displace. Right? So here the matrix will be of two by two. So let's start with the first one. If we apply unit displacement here, so the constrained structure will be somewhat like this. Right? I have constrained it. Now this is the constrained structure. Now if I apply unit displacement here, how it will go? It will go like this. Right? Keep a note that when I apply unit displacement, I am still restraining its rotation. So there is no rotation. You can see it's still a straight line. So if I apply here, what? Let it be k11. Okay. If it is k11, we have just derived that if the far end is fixed and it's giving a displacement, what will be the value of k11? It will be equal to 12 ei by l cube. It's l cube. So here it's 5 cube. Uh, what's the value? If you can tell me, what's 12 by 5 cube in fraction? If you can tell me. Similarly, uh, if we see about k12, in fraction it's 0.96. Fraction. Fraction. 12 by 125. Hmm? 12 by 125. 12 by 125. Then, if you see, this beam is rotating in clockwise direction, right? So to restrain its rotation, how the moment should be arise? It should be in anti-clockwise direction, right? If the moment is in anti-clockwise direction, with respect to this, whether whether it's same sign or it's opposite, it's opposite. So it has to be a minus. What is the value now? Here, if you see the far end is inch, and to cause a unit rotation, what is the formula we have just derived? Is minus. It's because of the sign six c i by five square. Similarly, if you apply at two a unit displacement. You see here, what we are doing is now. So the support has rotated. Uh, support has rotated, but has, it has not translated. So in this case, this is k two two. Why? Again, two two means we have applied it two, and we are interested at two. What is happening? So what will be the case? It will be equal to four ei by five. Correct. And k two one will be equal to. See, if it is like this. To restrain its displacement in the vertical direction, it should push up, right? So if it pushes up, it is in opposite direction. So it is again minus. What will be the value? I think you know it. Six c i by five square, right? Now, uh, if I put it in matrix form, can you please tell me it's twelve by one twenty five? This is six by minus six by twenty five minus six by twenty five, and this is four by five. This is exactly the inverse of the flexibility matrix. You can pause the video and you can check it by your calculators or manually by the simpler simplified formula of A inverse as one bar determinant of A into h under A. 
With that, you can find out the stiffness uh, inverse of this and you will get exactly flexibility matrix. Uh, this is the basic problem. Uh, one point I want to tell here is, it's always not true that the stiffness matrix will be an inverse of flexibility matrix. Now the question arises, when? This is the case, actually, which I gave was a true picture of a fixed fixed beam. Am I right? So if I restrain this, it becomes like this. Right? So because of this, this structure actually exists, right? It's just like a beam in between two fixed columns, or rigid columns. But if I give you something like this, you tell me what will be its uh, flexibility, if, if I want to convert this into coordinate system and then do, what you will do is, you will constrain this, right? And if you, const while constraining, you know there is no displacement in the downward direction, so only the rotation has been constrained, right? So this will be a one by one matrix or stiffness matrix. What about flexibility? You know, the flexibility is actually the static indeterminacy, am I right? So here, what is the static indeterminacy? 3 plus 1, generalized, 4. So what will, will be your uh, flexibility coordinate system? It will be a rotation here unknown, a displacement here unknown, and a rotation here unknown. 1, okay, let it be 1, 2, 3. So what will be the flexibility matrix here? 3 by 3. Can you tell me, is, is it possible that a 1 by 1 inverse will be a 3 by 3 matrix? Not possible. So this is the case when the structures are theoretically, uh, not only theoretically but practically also possible, like this case. In this case, the stiffness and the flexibility will be an inverse, but in this case when we we'll solve it, we will get some flexibility matrix, but its inverse will not be a stiffness matrix. This is one problem. Uh, now I think we can go for a typical problem, that is its application problem of stiffness. You must be thinking that till now we have just seen how the stiffness is calculated. Can we see how it is applicable? Means if you take any problem, uh, I guess I will take a problem with, in which I have values, so that it's easy. If I take this problem, a 10 kN here, a hinge here, a hinge here, and a fixed here. And it's a 15 kN here. 15 kN, 3 meter, 1 meter, 2.5 meter, 2.5 meter. And uh, here it's again a 20 kN load and a distance of 2 meter and 3 meter. You know this problem? No, no? Oh, then it's okay. So, we need to analyze it. If you talk about flexibility, what you have to do in flexibility is, okay, 3 plus, okay, 1, 1, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 7, 8, 8 minus 3, 5. Is it not a 5 by 5 matrix? Even if you find the 5 by 5 matrix, what you have to do is, later on, you have to convert it into forces, right? So, if you try to analyze this such a flexibility, it's like beyond your limit, right? Only a calculator can do. What about stiffness? What is stiffness? Again, it's DK, right? So if you talk about DK, what is unknown here? So let me constrain it. If I constrain it, what I have to do is, I have to make it fix here, make it fix here. This is 1 and this is 2. So what is the order of the matrix? 2 by 2. Can it be analyzed? Yeah, very easily, manually, very easily by calculator. So this is our problem. A 5 meter, a 4 meter, and here is 3 plus 2 is 5 meter. So let, let us first form the stiffness matrix. I think you are very perfect in this, still let me uh, do it for you this time. So apply a unit rotation at 1. I am representing a unit rotation by some distortion in the support, right? So don't get confused. So this is K11. If it is K11, it goes like this and it goes like this. Am I right? It will maintain its fixity here and it will rotate by a unit value here. What will be K11 then? You know, when it is rotated by a unit rotation, when the far end is fixed, what is the value? 4 EI by, see now it's rotating here also and here also, so it will be 4 EI by 5 plus 4 EI by 4, this support here also, right? So if this is K11, this, uh, I beg your pardon, the rotation is here, so this is 5 meter, 4 meter, 5 meter, okay, this is not a support. So K11. So what will be this? K12. I think you know. Whenever a support is rotated, there will be some moment transfer. If you know MDM, if you remember MDM, it transfers the moment to the near support with half its value. This is known as moment redistribution. So 4EI by this span. We will be using this span. 
so it's actually ei by 2 am i right similarly if you apply at 2 i think now you can uh, easily judge the value also here it is fixed this time this gets rotated by unit value and this remains as fixed this will be k22 see this same direction it will rotate like right? this only k21 what will be k22 it will be 4 ei by 4 plus 4 ei by 5 it's actually matching here so 4 ei by 4 plus 4 ei by 5 and what will be k21 1 by 2 of half of this span so 1 by 2 of 4 ei by 4 that is nothing but ei by 2 if we are right the stiffness matrix should always be a symmetrical matrix so it's ei by 2 here and ei by 2 so k21 is equal to k12 so just uh, i'll write it over here so that we can use it later in the application our matrix is somewhat uh, it's uh, 4 by 5 plus 4 by 4 is Nine by five, na? No? So it's nine by five, yeah. one by two, one by two, and nine by five, right? So uh, let me erase this part now. We have completed a matrix. Now the problem is still to analyze the structure. The second thing that uh, you know, actually, I've told you, P is equal to K delta, right? Or let me refine it. Uh, theta is equal to k inverse p. Am I right? Actually, k is p times delta. Delta here is our rotation. So I took k there and it's k inverse. K inverse we know. Theta we need to find. What our still problem is p value. P actually can be written as here as k dash as p dash minus p e. Because actually, there are two types of forces that are generated. One are the forces that is caused uh, due to settlements. One are the forces that are caused by the, actually the loads. Okay, here basically we are dealing with the FEMs, the generated forces. What is FEM? It's fixed end moments that are generally, uh, actually always generated due to the external loads. Here we will see that P dash value will be due to settlement and also loads on the joints. You will see it later if you see one more problem, loads on the joints or on the coordinates. So here there are uh, no loads on the coordinates, so here P dash will be zero. Let me see one by one. If I break it in three spans, uh, if I break it in three spans here, what is here it is 10 and 5. So it will be, what will be the fixed end moments here? PL by 8, PL by 8. Can you tell me the values or I will take it from you. So it's minus 6.25 here, 6.25 here, here it's PAB square by L square because it's uh, different span, it's minus 2.8 and 4.8, here it's again PAB square by L square and it's minus 14.4, you can choose your own sign convention, I am taking anti-clockwise as negative here, now the problem is P dash minus PE, so what is theta A, theta, actually it's A, B, C and D. We don't know theta B and we don't know theta C. What we are interested is, we are finding theta B. What is the stiffness matrix? 9 by 5, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 9 by 5. Obviously there is EI there, so I am not writing EI here. The inverse of this. And now here is the problem. So as I said, P dash is settlement of the loads on the joint. Is there any load at this particular joint or this particular joint? No. So for both cases it's 0 and 0. Here it's minus minus. Now this PE. PE is the loads due to FEM. So if you see this joint, actually this is this joint B. It's 6.25 in this direction and minus 2.8 in this direction. So if you take the sum, uh, you can write the value here, right? 6.25 minus 2.8 here. And at this location, that is here, it's 4.8 like this. Just with the sign you write, minus 14.4. Knowing all the values, you will get theta b and theta c. I am just writing down the value directly. Theta b comes out to be minus 3.05 upon ei 
and theta c comes out to be 4.12 upon ei so is the structure analyzed no as a structural engineer i won't say it's analyzed because my interest is to know the moments and once the moment is known i'll be finding the section and then i'll be giving the drawings so now here i think after uh, this it's very easy we all know it's the slope deflection method right so what is mab as per slope deflection mfab that value was actually uh, minus 6.25 plus 2 ei by what is this span 5 meter into 2 into theta b uh, theta a it's actually zero plus theta b that is minus 3.05 This will, will give you M A B. Similarly, M B A, M B C. Like this, you will find the moments. Uh, after finding the moments, you can actually find the reactions also. But here we are just stopping here because our aim was just to reach the stiffness matrix. And once the stiffness matrix is used, uh, obtained, we got the displacements. And once the displacement has been obtained, you go for the moment calculation. This was one of the application problem. Next we'll next video we'll see about uh, the frames application. how the frames can be analyzed and when trick question in frame stiffness matrix ha to abhi doubt bata de koi hai agar tumhe